When working with asynchronous requests, it's easy to create a situation where you create a whole bunch of requests only to get inconsistent updates to your UI. Not to mention something like autocomplete, where if you're triggering a new request for every single letter, that's a lot of HTTP requests. So we're gonna see how we can use the abort controller in React to manage and cancel requests that we no longer need. The abort controller is an interface that gives you the ability to have more flexibility for when you abort requests using the fetch API. When setting up an abort controller, we create a new signal from that controller, which is what we pass into the fetch API in order to gain that flexibility. Now in the context of React, it's pretty much gonna look similar to what we saw in MDN. We're just gonna have some different APIs that we can take advantage of in order to make it easier to work with it. So to get started, I created a simple application that lists out a bunch of Pixar movies whenever searched for. So for instance, if I wanted to look for Toy Story, we can see that my results are going to pop in with Toy Story. Now, if you were paying attention, that wasn't a video glitch. You might've seen a flicker for the results getting popped in. And if I type toy here, for instance, we can see that what's actually happening is we're getting a new search request for every single time I type in a new letter. And we can see here, the ending result here isn't actually the best results for toy. The reason is all these requests might come back at different times. It's not guaranteed that for every single letter, it's going to come back in the same order. So we end up getting a wrong result because it was from an earlier point in time in that search. Now, the way that this is currently working is anytime that input changes, we have this on change event handler. And what that's going to do is it's going to grab the value from that input and it's going to set it into state. And it's also going to kick off a response or API request to that search endpoint. But ultimately what we want to happen is we want to make sure that we're actually managing all these different requests that we're making. If we create a new request after the T, for instance, TO, we want to make sure that we cancel that previous request for just the T so that we don't unexpectedly get the result for T later on. So let's actually dig in and see how we can actually manage these fetch requests using the abort controller. So I'm going to create a new constant called controller. I'm going to set that equal to new abort controller. And then I ultimately need to pass a controller signal to my fetch request. So I'm going to create a new constant of signal and set that equal to controller dot signal. And then since I already have an object with all of my options for this fetch request, I can just pass this in as is to the fetch. Now, just to make sure everything is still working as expected, if I type in toy, we can see that I still get those re search requests. So this hasn't broken or changed anything. It's still working as it was before, but now we have the ability to use this controller in order to abort a request. But we have one issue here. Currently, this controller is scoped to this handle on change function. And the reason this is an issue is because it has no possible way of having any context of other instances of that handle on change being fired. So just to kind of think about this out loud, every single time we type in a new character, this function will fire. And every time this function fires, it's creating a new constant of controller. So that means we don't really have any way of detecting that another one had already fired previously. So what we're going to actually do is lift this controller up to a higher level so that we can have access to whether or not a controller already exists. Now to do this, we're going to store it using the ref API. And what we can do is we can first import use ref from React, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a constant called controller ref and set that equal to use ref. Now, instead of creating this new constant of controller here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set controller ref dot current equal to this new controller. So anytime that this fires, it's going to now store this new abort controller inside of my existing controller ref. But as we can see here, we're currently getting a type error. So back up inside of our use ref instance, we need to make sure that we set that type appropriately, which is going to be abort controller. But now we also need to update where we're accessing this signal. So I'm going to now replace the controller with the current instance. And just as a quick sanity check, everything is still working. But now what I want to happen is anytime this function fires, I wanna first check if a controller already exists. And if a controller already does exist, I wanna first abort that. So before I set this current value, I'm gonna first say if controller.current, I'm gonna fire controllerref.current.abort using the abort method. But if it doesn't exist, or even if it does exist and it does get aborted, we're then going to still continue to create that new abort controller where we then can then pass in that signal to fetch. So now we can start to see what happens when I type in toy, where I have these two aborted requests that happen before my final request from that Y, which includes that full word of toy. So what this means, it's no longer possible for one of those first two requests to come back after my final search request and give me invalid results for my final query. Now this works really well for any use case. If I start to type in other things, we can see that it's aborting those previous requests and only giving my final one. But if I go to the console, it looks like we're getting a bunch of errors for uncaught, uncaught dumb exceptions. 
Now, the issue is this is currently throwing an error and we're not currently catching any of those errors inside of our code. Now, there's different ways for how we can catch that error, including just chaining on a catch at the end of this fetch. But I personally like to use the try catch block, even though I know a lot of people give it hate. But what we can do is we can wrap this entire block with a catch and we can just console log this out for now. Not that we actually need it, but just to kind of see what's happening inside of the console. But ultimately, what's going to happen is we're going to try to make that fetch request. And if we succeed, we'll continue on by grabbing the JSON and actually setting the results with it. But if it gets thrown we're going to catch it and currently i'm going to console log but after we see what that actually looks like we can just simply do nothing so now when i start to type out monster we can see we get those aborted requests but we also get those dom exceptions that are now coming in as a console log instead and if i go ahead and clean that up we can see that instead we still get those aborted requests but we no longer get those errors now generally speaking though this is a good opportunity for being able to provide some kind of error handling inside of your application now the dom exception is something that we're intentionally throwing so you want to make sure that we're not responding to that in some kind of way but say that the api broke this is a good opportunity to add some kind of handling for that and also another thing to consider is the abort controller is just one option that we have for being able to build experiences like this, where maybe we want to also be able to throttle or to bounce on change to prevent the request in the first place. But having both tools gives us a lot of flexibility for how we manage our experience. Next up, let's see how we can further enhance our search experience in a React app by adding autocomplete for our search input.